So someone tagged me in this video on Instagram and said, can you teach me how to make it? And I, yeah, I can. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Ian, this is Learn How to Edit Stuff, and yes, we are going to recreate this video today that I got tagged in on Instagram, and here's what we're gonna be making, using my son Leo as our model because he's just so stinking cute. Now this effect looks slightly harder than it actually is to achieve, but luckily you're subscribed to my YouTube channel so you can learn how to do all these cool things and fancy video editing tricks in the easiest way possible, saving you time, saving you money, and making you look cool for your friends and family. That's really why we're doing this, so you can be cool, right? I don't know, am I cool? Let's jump in and get started. First, go to runwayml.com and sign up for an account if you don't have one already, then drop your footage into Runway, click on green screen, and then just click a few times on the thing you want to extract, and then you're done. Yep, single click rotoscoping. Have you seen any of my other videos? Do you know I work there? It's pretty incredible. You can refine it a bit with the brush tool if you want, but honestly, this is looking great for me, and it's only one keyframe, and it took like 30 seconds of my time. Some of your shots may be as easy, some of them might be a little bit more difficult, so spend as much time on this part of the process if you need, and I already know what you're thinking. Well, why don't you just use Roto Brush too? We're gonna get to that at the end of this video. I do a comparison, just stick around to the end, like, and subscribe. I'm going to export my selection out of Runway as a ProRes file with an alpha channel, but if you have the free version, you can just export with a green background and key it out later. Now toss the original footage and the rotoscope into After Effects and set the composition size to 1080 by 1080. Now you're gonna to wanna to pre-compose each layer and make sure you click Move to New Composition, which will make it the comp size and call the bottom layer background and the top subject. Or don't name any of your layers at all if you're an absolute psychopath. Now with your bottom layer selected, double click on the rectangle tool to add a mask around the outside of the composition, move a few frames ahead and add a keyframe for mask expansion, then go a bit further down and set the mask expansion to a negative value until it goes completely behind your subject. Now add a white solid at the bottom of the layer stack and adjust the easing of your keyframes accordingly. I'm using a plugin called Flow, but you can also do this in the graph editor. Pre-compose everything together and call it master, then make your composition duration a little bit longer, right click on the comp and go to time, time remapping, and pull the layer all the way out to the end of the composition and copy the first keyframe over to the end so it creates a looping boomerang type animation. I happen to be using a short clip, yours might be longer, but essentially all you're doing is doing time remapping and then taking the first keyframe and putting it at the end so it bounces back and forth. So you might not have to increase the composition length, you might not have to do other stuff, just use time remapping and copy the keyframe to the first keyframe to the end and then keep the middle one there so it goes back and forth. You get what I'm saying. Last but not least, add a posterized time effect to the master precomp and lower the FPS value to whatever you want. I found around 15 FPS to look pretty good, but the lower you go, the choppier it will look. So do whatever you think is best. Follow your heart, trust your gut, subscribe to my YouTube channel. So when you watch it back, if you feel like the motion loop is too slow, grab all of the keyframes, hold down Alt or Option, and drag the last keyframe towards the beginning of the comp to uniformly compress the amount of time between the keyframes, and then you'll have a cool Instagram loop thing with posterized time, and it looks impressive, and you, you tag me on Instagram at Naughty and Sands, and you ask me to recreate it for you, and we learn some cool stuff. It's, we're having a good time. Okay, so I said it at the beginning of this video. Why didn't you use Roto Brush 2? Why'd you use Runway. Well, first of all, I work at Runway. It's an incredible company with amazing technology, but really the reason I used Runway is because time is money. Roto Brush 2, here's the screen recording, took me two minutes and 51 seconds to complete. Runway took me 30 seconds to complete the rotoscope and then another like 30 or 40 seconds to export it. So all in with Runway, I spent under a minute and with Roto Brush 2, it was close to three minutes. Now, in the context of one singular video, maybe you don't think that that's a negligible amount of time to be, you know, whatever. But when you're working daily, weekly, monthly, yearly on doing this kind of stuff, those three minutes versus one minute are gonna add up and it's gonna cost a so much time and time is money. If you've seen my channel before, time is money. So I decide to use Runway because I prioritize my time over everything else always 
always. I like to try to get to the end result in the lowest amount of time possible because it just makes me a happier human being. You know, that's really what we're going for. So uh, the next question you probably have is, well, doesn't Roto Brush 2 look better? Cool. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Can you guess which one is Roto Brush versus Runway? So you probably think the one on the left is Runway. Wrong, it's Roto Brush 2, okay? This is exactly my point. Three minutes to get something that looks worse, 30 seconds to get something that looks better, and imagine if I had spent a little bit more time, 32 seconds on the Runway version, it would have looked that much cleaner. So you think you have all the answers, but you don't. Do I? Maybe, I might have more than you, which is why you should subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can also have all the answers. So that's it, that's the tutorial. I know you learned something valuable today, and if you find something on Instagram or Twitter or TikTok and you want me to recreate it within reason, tag me at Naughty and Sands, I will watch the video, and I promise you, I will consider it. I will consider it. If you're not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, I would heavily consider doing so, and I thank you for your time. You are a model citizen. Thanks for watching this video. My name is Ian, this is Learn How to Edit Stuff, and I will see you in the next one.